Welcome to DWBI Adda channel. Please subscribe for latest training videos. Hello to you all. Today we are at the add activity and we are today going to talk about writing data to database and explain what are shared preferences. So let's start. As you can see we have some usual variables here. Some design objects, firebase variables and then stringent integer variables. And then as you can see by description we have some shared preferences variables here. We'll explain shared preferences later, but now let's go and explain writing data to database. As you can see, I divided this activity into some parts. As you can see, reading and saving, sending data and updating database, writing data to database and shared preps. We have initialization of whole R view here, as you can see. And then we have an important variable, that's database references. We need to locate ourselves somewhere in database with this variable, so we can write our data into the right place. So where are we with this code here? As you can see, this is some routine code, usual code, Firebase database dot get instance dot get reference, and then with this here we're at the database now we're positioned at the field users as you can see at this child and then we're positioned at the child user dot get uid to get users unique id and that's this here so after positioning ourselves in database properly we can go further and uh, see what we are writing to our database so let's go here and see sending data and updating database. As you can see, we have button, button continue. And when we click on that button, we are getting values from our edit text here. Or we're setting just to zero by default if our edit text is empty. That's for home, taxes and business category or also for monthly. So we're sending that data and we want to write the data to database. Let's see how we're doing it. Before we explain this function parameters, let me explain you this function. Add incomes function. As you can see we have one, two, three, four parameters here and every one of them is integer. Here is that add incomes function as you can see. And now we are getting the current date with this function. This function is very simple, it's something like a pattern, you just need to copy this pattern and you'll get your current date, you don't worry about this, as I said, it's very simple. And after that, we're checking if each one of these variables is positive. And if it is positive, then we're going to save it to our database, we're going to write that to database. We're going to locate the place where we want to save this data, database reference, then child business, so we're here now, then child incomes, we're here, then child incomes plus load int, this is shared preferences part, so we're loading some int variable, I'll explain how and why, but just for now we're loading integer variable, that's this here, incomes plus some integer variable that represents the number of our income and then we're setting the volume like this set volume and add business that's this integer volume and let's open it here as you can see that's this so we updated this parameter here by this code here also we have same path here path to the data that we want to change and then we are changing our date with this current date. It's like add business for home and taxes, just the path to the data that we want to change is different. As you can see we have home value here and that's this, we're going here and for taxes also we have taxes instead of business. That would be it for these three categories. And now, as you can see for monthly, it's something different. We're positioning ourselves at the child monthly, as you can see this child here. And then we're going to earnings. 
and set value to this integer. So we're going here and then we're changing this value. And that would be it about this function add incomes. I hope that you understood it very well. Our pattern for database writing is this here. So we need to position ourselves with database reference. And then we're going further, we're going detailed positioning with this function. Database reference is dot child and then you type your child. And if that child has subchild, then we type that subchild and again the same. And if we are positioned to the child that we want to change, then we're going uh, dot child and then name of that child and then set value to set his value to some variable. As you can see, pattern is simple and that would be it about writing data to database. We write data to database in some other places in this activity but uh, we'll explain that after we explain shared preferences because shared preferences are so important for that part. So let's go and explain shared preferences. So before we go and explain code about shared preferences let me tell you some theoretical part about them. Android provides many ways of storing data of an application. One of these ways is called shared preferences and shared preferences allows you to save and retrieve data in the form of key value pair. As you can see we have part shared prefs here so let's open it and let's open shared preferences variables. As you can see we have some public static final variables and it means that this variable uh, will not be changed during the whole application session. So its value will be shared prefs and it will be not changed. As same for business, home, taxes and these are number of business incomes, number of home incomes and number of taxes income. Now let's go and see how we're doing that. We have reading from database here and we'll explain that in some other video. But now we have this shared preferences part where we save our variables. So we read this data from database and then we are saving it with our shared preferences. Let's explain how we are saving our data. As you can see by name of our function, we are saving just integer value here. We're doing like this. First we need to initialize our shared preferences and we initialize it like this. Shared prefs, that's the variable which I explained here. It's the name of our shared preferences and then mod private. This is just a pattern, you just need to type mod private. Don't worry about this here. Then we have to access shared preferences editor and to initialize it here. And then we are going to put our int value to our editor. And this is the very important step. Don't forget this because your shared preferences won't work without this. It's to apply to save what we done before. So we're putting our value e, that's this integer value. To the string s. So what that means? That means that we save this value at this name so we can find it later by typing this name. You'll see when I explain loading. Again, we save integer value e at the name string s. As you can see we have loading function here and we just need this string s. That's because we need this data so we can find this value. We have initialization of shared preferences and then we are returning shared preferences dot get int at this name. Then we have this value here and that's just the default value. If we don't find anything at this name then we will return zero. We have total of 10 lines of code here so you can see that shared preferences are very simple. That would be it about shared preferences. Let's go with further explanations. As I said before, we save our variables from database here and I'll explain why we need to save that variables here in the next tutorial. So as I said, we have this update parameters function and let's review it now. Here is that function, update parameters and our integer variable business data gets the value when we totalize load int from the name business, this variable here. So 
we saved something at the name business and now we're loading it here so as I said loading at name business plus integer value of business value that business value is this value here value from our edit text so we are totalizing value from our edit text and value from our database so we can update our value in database and not just set it to this value if you understand so we add this on our value from database it's same about home data and taxes data and we're just calculating our balance data by totalizing these three variables then we have again writing to database so our database reference is as i said here and then we go to the child business not this business this business and we update his body it's same for home taxes and balance i explained something about logic of this activity but uh, we'll complete this add activity in the next tutorial when we learn something about reading database and uh, you'll understand this whole activity and how it works its concept for this video that would be it see you in the next video thank you and goodbye